During World War I, the Halifax Harbour in Nova Scotia, Canada was one of the main ports used by the Allies to transport troops, relief supplies, and munitions across the Atlantic Ocean. On December 6, 1917, a French freighter named the SS Mont Blanc was on its way to meet a convoy of military ships that would escort it across the Atlantic Ocean. The Mont Blanc was carrying a large cargo of explosives, which included 200 tons of TNT, 35 tons of high-octane gasoline, 10 tons of gun cotton, and 2,300 tons of picric acid, which is an organic compound similar to TNT. On the opposite end of the harbor, a Norwegian steamship called the SS Emo was on its way out of the harbor as it entered a section known as the Narrows. As ships passed each other in the narrow channel, they were instructed to keep the land to their right side and allow ships to pass on their left. However, the Emo was traveling on the wrong side of the Narrows and moving faster than the speed limit of 5 knots. The Mont Blanc's crew noticed the Emo heading straight for their ship about three-fourths of a mile from impact. Both ships began to signal each other with their horns and adjust their speeds and direction in an attempt to avoid collision. But their efforts were in vain as the front of the Emo swung into the Mont Blanc's right side. The ships collided at a speed of 1 to 1.5 miles per hour but the impact caused a fire on the Mont Blanc. Fearing that the boat could explode at any second, the captain of the French vessel ordered his crew to abandon ship. As their lifeboats headed for the Dartmouth shore, the Mont Blanc's crew shouted warnings at the surrounding boats and spectators, but their voices couldn't be heard over the noise and confusion taking place in the harbor. After the impact, the SS Mont Blanc continued to drift and beached itself at Pier 6 near the foot of Richmond Street. The burning ship caused hundreds of spectators to pour in on the harbor shore. A tugboat, whaling ship, and steam pinnace tried to put out the fire and tow the SS Mont Blanc away. At the same time, the Halifax Fire Department arrived with their new motor-powered fire engine. Twenty minutes after the collision, at about 9.05 a.m., the SS Mont Blanc exploded with the force of nearly 3 kilotons of TNT, shattering the 3,000-ton steel ship to pieces. It was the largest man-made explosion until the creation of nuclear weapons. All buildings and structures within half a mile radius were destroyed or badly damaged. The explosion was so powerful, it vaporized the water caught in its blast, leaving the harbor floor momentarily exposed. A tsunami, which rose as high as 60 feet, was formed by water surging in to fill the empty space. A tidal wave beached the Emo on the opposite side of the harbor at Dartmouth, killing seven of its crew. The explosion sent the Mont Blanc's 90mm forward gun 3.5 miles north. A half-ton piece of the Mont Blanc's anchor was found two miles south. 1,600 people were killed instantly and 9,000 were left injured, including around 200 people that went blind. The blast destroyed the three ships trying to help the SS Mont Blanc, killing everyone on board the steam pinnace and leaving most of the tugboat and whaler's crew members dead. All but one from the Halifax Fire Department that arrived on scene, including the chief, were killed in the explosion. Soon, a black rain consisting of coal and oil began to fall from the sky leaving people unrecognizable and causing infection and wounds which led to the deaths of over 300 more victims. The blast knocked over wood and coal-burning stoves inside the nearby houses, setting thousands of homes on fire with barely any firefighting force left to help. Around 6,000 people were left homeless, and 25,000 were left with insufficient shelter. Rescue efforts began immediately but were slowed by a record-breaking blizzard that hit Halifax the next day, leaving 16 inches of snow. Before the explosion took place, a sailor entered the train station located a few hundred feet from Pier 6 and warned the train dispatchers of the Mont Blanc's dangerous cargo. One of the dispatchers, a man by the name of Patrick Vincent Coleman, decided to stay at his post so he could send Morse code messages to warn incoming trains of the impending explosion. Hold up the train, ammunition ship of fire in harbor, making for Pier 6, and will explode. Guess this will be my last message. Goodbye, boys. His message stopped a train carrying around 300 passengers, and most likely saved many lives that day. However, 
Patrick Vincent Coleman did not make it to a safe distance in time and died in the explosion. Billy Wells was the driver of the fire engine and the only firefighter from his crew to survive the explosion. The blast sent Wells flying from the driver's seat with the steering wheel still in his hands. The blast ripped the clothes off his body and the muscles off of his right arm. One of his eyes was also badly injured. The tsunami then carried Wells up and down Richmond Hill, where he got tangled in some telephone wires and almost drowned. On his way back to find the rest of his crew, Wells made note of the death and devastation around him. The sight was awful, with people hanging out of windows dead, some with their heads off, and some thrown onto the overhead telegraph wires.